Okay. We're going to watch another caddy video, finally. The first one of the year. Uh, I've gotten more than a couple of recommendations to watch this one next. Um, this seemed to be one of the more popular ones to me to react to, apparently. <laughs> so we're going to watch this to start the new year. Uh, this is the comical world of the 287 worst game reviews ever. Uh, this is like three years ago. So, you know, a little late <laughs> to, the, to, to this party on this one. But, you know, I'm catching up, guys. I'm catching up. Let's, let's, ah! let's go. Let's go, Caddy. Oh, you're a great Wait, before we start, let's all say a prayer to Jeebus for Caddy's neighbors. Let's all just take a minute. Okay, we're good. Fucking <laughs> bathroom. We just need one more thing to tie the room together. Oh, God. Perfect. Hang on. In Animal Crossing, there's a urinal. Game theory. My villager has a wang. I think I've been playing too many games. Oh, my Can God. I go outside yet? Oh yeah. The world is still bricks. Well, if I have to be <laughs> the world is still for bricks. Another... Okay. Three years, I might as well catch up on my online video viewing. But what to look at? I mean, have you ever stepped back for a That's second and realized how gargantuan the internet is? Without even considering the size of the deep web? <laughs> With such a canyon of content available to watch hey. all over the internet, where does one start when they're looking for something what new? Me? I look around on Twitter Nightmare for those accounts things. dedicated to posting nothing but out-of-context clips. If I see some clips from things I've never seen before and they pique my interest... <laughs> And that's the next thing I want to watch. I mean, yeah, most of these accounts are for kids shows that I really couldn't care less about or old TV shows which are really difficult to start binge watching because they're hard to find online. Like Scooby-Doo out of context, Sonic Boom out of context, or uh, Hannah Montana. But every so often you'll find a <laughs> pot of gold. And no yeah, a lot of the a lot of the out of context uh, profiles I would follow, like I, they would just be randomly recommended to me and I'd be like, what the fuck? This is a thing? And I'd look at a couple of things, follow, and then completely forget about it until the next post. But, yeah. Uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore, or X, whatever the fuck you want to call it these days. I can't stand it on there anymore. Like, it, it's just gotten bad. I can't stand it, and it's a shame because there's more than a few people on there that I follow that I loved seeing what they'd post, but... For my sanity, I just, I had to give it up. I had to give it up. I'm not talking about out of context Saudi football or out of context Mamma Mia. Oh, I'm <laughs> talking Mia, about out no. of context accounts of YouTube shows. I'm getting you for this. Ah. I am always in the market for binging on a new YouTuber, especially with... <laughs> that going on, and it's actually God the out of context it. Chadtronic Twitter account that got me Someone watching get him a bib. in the first place. Sometimes Spit all, all you need are a few brilliant out of context clips, and that says all you need to know about a new channel that you may or may not like. It cuts out all of the time and energy that you need to invest in searching through thousands of channels and thousands of videos that they'll have on their channels in order to find something that you want to see. Out of context clips for me are a brilliant advertising tool for new channels. <laughs> this smoothly leads me onto one particular Twitter account that really stood out to me during one of those days that I was looking for the next piece of internet media that I wanted to binge. And all it took was one single image to get me hooked. After seeing this, I desperately had what to the find fuck? the show that this review score grid came from. Can you blame me? It spoke to me. It was hungry for my eyes. <laughs> oh, and after a little bit of research, I managed Ouchie. to find the origin of this image. Even it big was names from a YouTube channel known as Navigator. I stopped being on it. And on that channel, they hosted a show I heard, known um, as... I heard um, on Twitter, like, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I think I, someone I was following either on Twitch or YouTube was complaining about it because they uh, would post, like, new videos on Twitter... But apparently there's a new thing where it doesn't even show up. Like usually when you post like a YouTube video, it'll have like a little box where you can like hit play or something. I don't know. But I think now it's just a link. I don't know. Like I said, 
gaming in the Clinton years. Gaming in the Clinton years. Oh, this is real. And that's not sake. only the greatest name for a show I think I've ever seen, but on the Navigator <sighs> channel, they decided to make it an acronym. So the start of every review video is titled Gitsy, which sounds like a Russian fizzy drink. <laughs> Gitsy. <laughs> in your spleen. And you know you're in for something special when the names of these it reviews are hair like on Mask, spleen. The Game, and my personal favourite, Ocarina of Time. The. I was incredibly lucky to even find this channel in the first place because, you see, even though I found these out-of-context YouTube channel clips of the show, this was never supposed to be a YouTube channel at all, and the show wasn't even originally called Gaming in the Clinton Years. It was originally an independent, <laughs> low-budget public access TV show known as Flights of Fantasy, a video game discussion, interview, and review show created by this <laughs> lovely crumpet known as George Wood in the Land of Mary. He also had a few other people that sometimes did reviews, but those ones... The basic strategy for dogfighting is an attack from behind. ...aren't very good. The reviews that George himself presented all throughout the 90s have become slightly infamous for being some of the worst of all time. Not necessarily for the opinions he had... Super Mario World 2 is far better than the less than pleasing Super Mario World. Sometimes, but for the schizophrenic writing that changes the subject every five seconds, tons of completely false statements, strange line delivery. A ride on a tiger this... sounds like a lot of fun. Well, it is. The constant contradictions. Low that poly. is one annoying flaw. So much for realism. Realism is getting it. boring in video We'd games. The fact that he could rarely finish any single game he reviewed because of how bad he was at playing them, so just use cheat codes to skip to the ending. The following password will get you into the next level in Death Heme. Jokes that fall so flat they make you shrivel up. Music that has a totally cool beat. <laughs> and extremely <laughs> questionable comments that make absolutely no sense to anybody. In Tomb Raider 3, create a storyline in which Lara gets breast cancer. What the fu- What have I become? We guarantee <laughs> the gaming world would be- What the fuck? Don't be disrespectful, Lara Croft, like that. What you do? What you- I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap you in your Clinton years mouth. I can't- <laughs> Don't be, don't be doing, don't be doing this to me. <laughs> so basically, it's at a game journalist level. Shocked, Damn. stunned, and moved at the effort to make Lara's character more meaningful. You know that Lara Croft, the millionaire explorer with handguns and a mysterious family history. I know how to make her character more meaningful. Give her a tumor! The Navigator YouTube channel stands for the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers, which is really bloody stretching it for an acronym. And all they did was archive all of the individual game reviews that were a part of the original TV show and re-upload them under the new title of... Um... Gaming in the <laughs> If it weren't for this channel, then all of the reviews George Wood aired while wearing his PJs would be completely lost media. And I'm glad that they aren't lost, because these reviews... Mario Kart 64 is fun to play, except when you're losing. ...are a sight to behold. Very interesting. All you need to know about how great these reviews are is that they were originally from a show called Flights of Fantasy, and then got renamed to Gaming in the Clinton years. Why that name? Why that logo? What has Billy Big Boy Clinton got to do with anything video game related? Did he endorse this show personally? <laughs> is this some kind of weird propaganda? Why is his face used as the logo for a video game show? What the hell could be next? It's literally, it's, it's a Clinton. It's a Clinton conspiracy. It's a Clinton conspiracy. <laughs> I can't, this is so, oh, okay, let's just go, let's just go. Washing in the Lincoln years? And what about that Washing tricky little the theme song? I don't know if it's an original or if it's from a game or something, but god damn it, it matches the absurdity of the title card perfectly. Uh. <laughs> just, just think for a second. You're making a game review show. You name it, Gaming in the Clinton years. You plaster William Smirk staring right at you, and then include the most simplistic yet ominous 8-bit tune of all time that gives the impression of Clinton stalking you. <laughs> and the title of this video today isn't lying to you. When I said I was looking for my next binge watch, I meant it. Which is why I plonked my ass down, got comfortable, and forgot I needed to wash that super glue off my pants as I watched 287 of these reviews. Yuck, yuck, yuck. 
287 of possibly the worst game reviews of all time. And as far as I could tell, this is every review available from Clinton's lap dog that you can find on YouTube today. By the way, three of these weren't presented by George, but you still got to see the plaque on Billy's teeth. These allegations. <laughs> And you'd think that's all I would have to say about the history of this show. But then you go to the Navigator YouTube channel and notice that there aren't 287 videos on there. There's 1,322. So how many Clintons are hiding in there? Well, if you know anything about me... 1,322. 1,000... Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jeebus. Yeah, I I wouldn't. I couldn't. No, no. I may not be stubborn, but I am extremely stubborn. So I went into the <laughs> upload history of I'm this channel stubborn. and scrolled through but all I am of the one thousand three hundred and twenty-two videos to figure out what the rest of the videos were. And what I discovered is just as interesting as the reviews themselves. Enter the Gecko is Gex's second Gex game. That will get you Gex excited. Okay, maybe the reviews are better. Get excited. Out of the 1,322 videos, we already know that 287 are reviews, so that's easy enough. And then I counted a total of 767 videos dedicated video to games. random B-roll, hints and tips, <laughs> and occasional interview clips that have the nothing early to do Batman with the reviews. Games. You know, Jesus. random cutscenes, endings, walkthroughs, Love interest cinematics, eyes, behind buddy. the scenes, promotion reels, stuff like that. And considering that most yeah, of these videos one, are less than 20 seconds long, most of these to are really not worth talking about. <laughs> Illusion of Gaia. One of the best stories ever for a video game. Someone I haven't heard anything this into a movie. Be forewarned, the pig sacrifices a To be fair, I usually get my twist. gaming news from you. So. <laughs> no joke, that's the whole video. The more lines you make, the more points Wait. and surprises Wait. will come your way. Shocking dramatic ease to talking about. Illusion of Gaia. One of the best stories ever for a video game. Someone please turn this into a movie. Be forewarned, the pig sacrifices a shocking dramatic twist. No joke, that's the whole video. The more what the make, fuck? The more points and surprises will come your way. Wait, you get surprised when you play Tetris. What's there to be surprised about? Oh my god, it's a block! I've never seen one of them before! I mean, there's even oh one video god. here titled Metal Gear Solid Psycho Mantis. And with it being a walkthrough video, you'd think that it would give you hints and tips to finding and beating Psycho Mantis, right? No! What are you? The, the floppy old sack. In fact, what you actually get is three minutes of George telling you what happens in the story, and then you get ten seconds at the end of the video explaining Psychomantis. Just put your controller in the second controller port on the PlayStation. If you do this, he'll go down easily. That's it. That's all he says in a video titled what? Metal Gear Solid Psychomantis. And the gameplay on display what? here is quite frankly embarrassing. He wasn't even trying. With the dual shot controller, <laughs> you will actually feel his heart attack as the controller vibrates. Oh, yeah, help me! <laughs> Call an ambulance! What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, false alarm. It, it was just my controller shaking. Oh, good. I thought you were having a heart attack. So did I. It's exactly the same thing. Oh, look, it's a load of kids. Let's ask them some questions. Tell me, youth, what was your favorite part of Donkey Kong Country? It's pretty cool and how, and how they also made the um, Donkey Kong. Your oh. mother should have swallowed you. It's a oh, my game God. Game You know Listen, you me. That video Listen. Games rot your brain? We don't talk about that. I think they were right. But ah, you didn't see this coming, did you? I've actually been secretly timing you all I for the fuck, last few minutes. I fucking it's more suck. Than time for you to realize that 1,322 videos, minus okay. 767 unrelated videos, minus 287 reviews, leaves us with 268 videos unaccounted for. So what Billy Willies are hiding in those ones? <laughs> At this point, I had no clue how deep the rabbit hole was going down, but I was too far down to climb back out, so I kept on digging. And this is what I discovered. A lot of these remaining unaccounted videos are in fact duplicate uploads. No, not the same uploads added to the same playlist more than once accidentally. I mean that they're exactly the same videos uploaded twice to the same channel with unique URLs. Now, to be a little bit fair, a lot of these duplicate uploads are actually different video qualities, which is probably why they were re-uploaded in the first place. But usually the second uploads only manage to improve from 240p to 360p. So that's basically <coughs> the same jump as filming with a potato 
to filming with a peeled potato. And as I was shifting through this muck, I decided to count exactly how many duplicates were uploaded to the Navigator channel and write them all down as I was going. As you can see, there was one for Mega Man Legends, oh one God. for Quest 64, one for Cool Borders 3, not too many, all things considered. And then I found more. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are not the ransom demands of a Uncomfortably This is how close. many exact copy duplicate videos I was able to count and write down as I was searching through the 1,322 uploads of the Navigator channel. Do you know how many there were in total? 268. So yeah, I led you a little astray just then. Those remaining 268 videos I mentioned earlier? 268 videos unaccounted for. They're all duplicate uploads. I feel like I found the Zodiac Killer. How does this channel exist? <laughs> Even more insane is that a few of the reviews on the channel were duplicated not just once, but sometimes twice. Like with Donkey Kong Country. You know, just in case you didn't agree with this review, you can always check out the same review again two more times. It gets even more confusing when you see some of the games have four of the same videos each, but two of each of those videos are the same reviews as the others, but longer. Mario 64's review is copied, but then so is Mario 64 Extended. Bubsy 1's review is copied, but then so is Bubsy 1's other review. You, which, no joke, is the exactly fuck? the same video, but with one added sentence worth of video length. There's other videos talking about completely different things Seriously? to do with the same game that have very Seriously? similar names, but with added brackets that have no duplicates. There's a Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel review that's really short, and a much longer one that is entitled as extended, but has the publisher's name in brackets so that you know the difference. They did a countdown video of the best racing games of 1999, forgot to talk about the sports game, so just re-uploaded the racing list countdown with a sports countdown stapled on the end. There are multiple playlists on the channel that miss out loads of reviews of the official show the playlist is for, and oh include my God. videos that have nothing to do with anything. Some of the reviews are 14 minutes, but uh, as well as 30 seconds. There's a review here for the Marvin missions, but then there's a duplicate uh, upload named Daffy Duck for Marvin missions. Uh, every single review uh, if it's an original or a duplicate begins with that same bloody uh, Mix this all together hell. and you're left with a channel that's about as clean as measles. So to be more accurate, in order for me to check which reviews on the channel were indeed duplicates, I ended up watching not just 287, but in total 555 videos. I know, I should have stopped at number 402, but I needed to be sure. <laughs> Even better, if you check the first ever uploads made to the channel, you'll see that the Super Mario 64 review is actually number 386. So all of those 287 reviews I watched for this video, that isn't even all of them. No one knows what happened to them. George Wood is the Bigfoot of the video game industry. Let me make this perfectly <laughs> clear, though. Bigfoot. Any jokes Come on. I made today at George's expense are not meant in Leave malice Bigfoot whatsoever. I genuinely love Let this show precisely life. for how bad it is. This is not a hate campaign, and I don't want anybody to harass anyone over this video. Besides, not every single one of these reviews has something worth talking about in them anyway, either because of their length, because nothing funny happens in them, or because they're just not that very interesting. But plenty of these are gold. Watch this cool effect. Squeak. Shall we watch a few then? <laughs> we were kind of hoping to see mannequin piss in the background. Okay, well, I'm already okay. regretting well, it anyway. Well, no wait a minute. Can make this game viable. Wait a minute. So let's start off <laughs> wait a in minute. this review of Chrono Trigger. George decides to not review the game at all and instead just tell you how to finish like five of the quests and then spends the next six minutes showing you random parts of the game. You can get some food and then listen to Marl call you a pig. The next event, however, is not funny. He even does the same with Final Fantasy VI's Makes review, sense. which barely reviews the game at all and just comment. walks you through the main plot points. Yeah, but Soldiers it, knock on the door, those examples were a little excessive. And maximum Carnage, where there's no much. review at all, but they still decided to name it after the reviews and not call it B-roll. I mean, these reviews may be useless, but at least it's better than in this review of the <laughs> our good friend George complains a lot about the seed growing IGN system will being always, bad always while constantly failing this jump resetting the IGN will always and forever have shade thrown its way it will never not have shade thrown its way it w it's going to be like no matter what happens to IGN like if, if sometime in the in the near future or far future whenever they like just shut down they're still going to get made fun of. They're still going to get shade thrown at them. And honestly, we all deserve that. We all deserve to have that in our life. Seed that he needs to make the jump and then not throwing the seed closer to the gap that he can't make it across. Hello? Hello? Ants can fly anywhere. They don't need mushroom trampolines. Yes, you're right. And you know what? 
Bandicoots don't wear trousers. You know what I hate most about a video game? When the control is too responsive. The control is overreactive. Yeah, when I press a button, I want the game to do something two seconds later. Wow. Check out this here. If you click on the Bloody Raw 2 review, what do you think you get? You get a review of Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, of course. And then five seconds, I repeat, Five seconds of a Bloody Roar 2 review. Many of the same problems plague Bloody Roar 2, so we'll just move on to Mortal Kombat 4. I'm sad that I lack the imagination to make this up. It's better than this review of Devil Dice, though, because there isn't a review at all, just the intro how to play cinematic with the scoreboard just splatted on the screen. Come on, you can't do that! What do you think of the game, George? Let me into that broad and manly oh, head no. of yours! Or at least <laughs> let me sit on it. Your hair looks like a sofa. Ooh, what's this? A final fight. <laughs> Three review? <laughs> that is no, so fun. because all he does is say the game is not that hot, and neither is the ending. But we thought you might want to see it anyway. The game isn't good, and neither is the ending. Now here's the ending. We. Brave Fencer Mushashi. <laughs> Excuse me, George. What was that? Brave Fencer Mushashi. I'm sorry, George. Could you say that what again? I missed fuck? it. Brave Fencer Mushashi. Oh, of course, that's my favorite game. I love Brave and some Wushashi. In more famous videos talking about Castlevania Symphony of the Night, there's more to pick apart here than pulled pork. With no in-game cinemas or anything. You know, except for the plentiful voice acting? What is a man? Character building RPG elements is unique and impressive, but almost unnoticeable in terms of the effect on gameplay. Okay, first of all, how could you possibly say it's impressive when you think it does nothing? And secondly, did we play the same game? We got far That's into right. the game. Give but us still nothing. Fell far from the end. Ah, well, you didn't even finish it. That explains a lot. We also have a minor complaint about one aspect of the game's control. If you're standing still and you swing your whip, you can't jump until the whip has come all the way back to you. Now that's ridiculous, folks. That's how Castlevania works, Georgie Porgy. In fact, if you think the RPG elements don't do anything, why don't you equip a faster weapon to fix this problem? That is one annoying flaw. So much for realism. Ah, uh, yes, realism in Dracula's castle with fire-breathing three-headed dogs and old giant rotting men made out of flies. Shame on you, Castlevania. You aren't realistic enough. Alucard doesn't even work in an office. The camera will catch Princess See, I Jean haven't even the played shower. the earlier result, Castlevania games and even I know this is bullshit. The <laughs> Isn't that a hoot? Why do I get the impression that this was based on a true story in George's past? Isn't that a hoot? Can I also bring attention to the fact that there <laughs> are two Earthbound reviews that aren't technically duplicates, but one of them they did completely wrong, so just kept that one up and then uploaded a correct one? <laughs> Seriously, on the first upload, the audio just cuts out completely after George says, Burger Shop! Arcade. Burger Shop. And they uh left this upload as it was, Navigator, I love you. No one buys a game <laughs> specifically for multiplayer options. Oh, Goldeneye. Well, <laughs> Gran Turismo wouldn't be the. I've been playing Goldeneye on the Xbox. Well, we're all for good stories, but there are some established entities which defy that need. It's like turning Mario into a sports game. Well, <laughs> it would be if we were with plot development. Have you ever played a Mario game before? Now, if you've been watching this video so far, I'm sure that you've all noticed the garbage picture quality of these videos but to be fair this is something that cannot be helped. We gotta you love know, them like pixels your taxes. Unless you avoid them. Not only was this content some of the earliest of its kind, but this was back in the 90s, so you can't really help that everything looks like burned pastry. The surprising challenge, even on child's play, makes this game too hard for the tots, but perfect for the pros. But I do think they could have done a lot better with the sound mixing. So he embarks on a mission to collect as many yarn balls Oh my god, yo, you and trying to get me to play Mega Man. my favorite game reviews is when the reviewer is trying to talk to me. I know. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to making it into a YouTube video. Blasto. Yet another wisecracking hero, like Bubsy, Gex, Toomba. Ah uh, yes, because Tomba is well known for his constant oh, wisecracks. With all of that dialogue, he doesn't have. PSP Buster PSP Brothers PSP Collection for the PlayStation. Damn, you know me? This blast from the past is, well, not worth busting your butt to get. Get it? No, I don't get it. Please explain. Buster Brothers, bust your butt? Oh, thank you for that. I was really lost. Even though it's right <laughs> in front of you. Tiss, tiss, tiss. <laughs> Tisk, tisk, tisk. His ramps will come in tisk, handy on tisk, many occasions. Tisk. Adults will like this brain teaser. And what?
Adults will like this brain teaser and what? The Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Not as good as the original for some unknown reason. You can't just say that. Why is it worse? Tell me, Georgi. Cool, dude. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah. By the way, can nah. somebody explain the difficulty rating section of the reviews to me? Because I don't get it. Well, Take I love how this is the video where we're just making random noises sometimes. It's just the majority of just random ass noises. Sitting. Then in the next breath, he says, The frustrating control has you fumbling around. But then the difficulty is rated E. Does this mean an E rank is too easy? Does it mean it's too hard? Does it mean it's unfair? Does it mean it's too imbalanced? Help me, Georg. You are stupid. Okay, Georg, you didn't have to be mean. I don't like you until I say that. You really don't have my feelings. And how about here <laughs> in the Armored Core review? All you do is kill enemy robots. That task is usually way too easy despite the very poor play control so it's way too easy and yet you give the difficulty a c what scale are we working at we did not review this title as a game it's not a game it's an interactive music experience well if that's the case then why did you bother rating any of this there is no gameplay so how can the difficulty be rated a b but with the guide <laughs> we were able to beat the game in one four hour sitting without saving so wait wait you give the challenge Damn, an a so ranking chill. which i guess means the, the challenge is high but how can you say that when you outright admit Admit that you just followed a guide and finished the game in four hours. Georgie Porgy pudding and pie kissed the girls and made them cheetah video games. We changed our challenge rating of the game to a C, mainly because we beat it unexpectedly. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence right there sums up everything. Can we all uh, just mentally underline the word unexpectedly? Oops. We actually finished the game we were reviewing. Whoops. Perfect about this show. They so rarely ever beat the games that they review that it surprises them when they do. We want to show you the entire <laughs> game, but unfortunately, we just don't have the time. He couldn't even beat Search for Reptar. The game takes 45 minutes. Yeah, this is it, lads. I'm gone. I'm out of here. I don't want this anymore. It's sending me. I, I've been sent. We're not quite sure if we'll ever beat this one. I mean, look, if you're stuck on the easiest level of Disney's Tarzan, we could not pass the stampede level without cheating and using the game shot. Then you probably shouldn't be left to review Contra 3. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you should I... not have to jump onto a vine to get it moving. Anyone who's ever climbed a rope knows you can wiggle your body and get it moving very quickly. What are you talking about? What? You can do that. Did you try pressing the move buttons while you were there? I... No? <laughs> the, move, the, the buttons that make you move? First of all... Like, I feel like they were playing with the controller with only one hand and didn't realize what the buttons did. Like, I'm getting this feeling. Oh, you know what I'm reminded of? Oh my god, the fucking iconic legendary review. Was it IGN? I think it was IGN. It's usually IGN. Um, That person that couldn't play Doom? The newer Doom series? I can't remember which one it was. But, like, they they couldn't get past the first level... Um, like, they couldn't shoot or shit. They didn't know any of the buttons. Um, oh, and yeah, the, cu the Cuphead one as well. Oh my god. It was just a shit show. It was like, because it, it was like, not only the Doom one I'm thinking of, but the Cuphead one as well, where people were really st starting to ask a lot more frequently, do you guys have journalists, reviewers there that actually play games? Have actually held a controller before reviewing this very popular AAA game? It's like, uh, uh. Lower the difficulty level to one like, star come on. and change the number of rounds to one. Imagine if nowadays you had There's to read literally billions of us out here playing games and you can't level. you can't find this one exactly journalist gaming in the Clinton years is like. that's used it's like a controller you're before. A carpenter hammer his thumb repeatedly 
while complaining about the fact that he didn't buy any nails. I mean, just look <laughs> at this Johnny. He's right next to the base easiest enemies in Doom 1 and yet doesn't fire back until a good three seconds later. And then when playing ODT on PS1, he decides, you know what? I'm just going to run right off the edge of the cliff and blame the game for it. Falling off cliffs is rather easy when the camera doesn't show them to you in time. Did George play all of his games blindfolded? It is unknown whether the actual <laughs> gameplay is more like Tomb Raider or Doom. Okay, maybe he didn't. Maybe he's just blind. Ever since Tekken, swords and axes have become a staple in fighting games. Oh, what? yeah, because Tekken 1 is so well known for their characters with weapons. Or what? Two of them. Like I mentioned earlier, George what? is also quite infamous for going completely off the rails about anything. Just get over it. This is the age of South Park. We don't like South Park, but we do like Resident Evil 2. Like in this review of All Star what? Baseball okay. 99, where he gets quite irate about the names of one of the stadiums. What does Why that does even have to do with, with the, the game? the exception of Ken Griffey Baseball for the N64, lists the Baltimore Orioles Stadium as Baltimore Stadium. They have the correct name, so what's the deal? Are the Orioles so pig-headed about the use of Oriole Park at Camden Yards that they only let Nintendo <laughs> use the name? That really stinks. I mean, I don't know what Indeed. he's talking about. What in Maybe the it's very serious fuck? and political. But come on, dude. I'm not going to boycott a video game what? because the name of a baseball stadium isn't correct. The Orioles have the sun on the top of the scoreboard. Instead, this game has an imitation, El Sol. Another title, Griffey Baseball, has the sun. Okay, well, now I'm boycotting it. We had a lot of fun creating three fat black ladies fighting one skinny white turd. Ugh. <sighs> Oh. You can head towards oh, the waterfall and sake. listen as it gets louder and louder. Okay, well, that's pretty technical, isn't it? I don't think I've ever seen a game do faded audio before. In Super Mario 64, <laughs> you can do just about anything. It is, in fact, like jumping into the movie Toy Story. Okay. Oh, God, what? I mentioned it, didn't I? The Toy Story review. This is one of the more popular ones on the channel, and for good reason. It's completely psychotic. When you pop in this game, <laughs> the first thing you notice is the poor okay. engine oh. Woody. Oh, yeah. Okay, I do have to say... I remember playing this game. I remember playing the fuck out of this game. And the thing is... I didn't enjoy it. But I was so pissed... That this game was like... Fighting me on finishing it. That I literally beat the game out of spite. Even though I fucking did not have a good time. It, it's not that it, it was like... A very horrendous game it was just i at that at that point i was i was ready for my um shooting everything up era of can i just kill people in the game please <laughs> oh my god yeah i don't think i have it either um god renting from blockbuster yeah yeah that's I think I actually have a game I'd never you return will to Blockbuster. You not get a seven-minute review for Toy Story as a game. Instead, you get an incoherent and disconnected rant all about silicon graphics computers, and it's just as enthralling as it sounds. The Toy Story movie was done with silicon graphics computers. We don't know, however, if the game actually used silicon graphics computers. Why didn't Disney Interactive use silicon graphics computers? Disney Interactive did not use SGI computers. Donkey Kong Country was created with silicon graphics computers. Then Jesus we once Christ. again roll around to the fact that he's the game- He's really stuck in some silicone, ain't he? He really wants some of that silicone. Wants it bad. It's too hard and that you have to cheat, and apparently- This cheating brings victory much too quickly to warrant spending your money. I kind of miss Blockbuster as well. People don't spend 60 bucks on a game they know they can beat. So if that's the case, then why do you complain when a game is too hard? By your logic, doesn't that mean the game was worth the money? George, you've got to cut out the aspirin. Your brain is getting confused, and you're starting to look like Chandler Bing. Speaking of action figures, take a look at this one. It's a takeoff of Blanca from Street Fighter 2. Also notice the similarities what? to other Street Fighter characters on the package design. Aha! We caught these guys ripping off Capcom. Anyway, let's get back to Toy Story. What? What? I think George was grown in a tube. The real star is what? the level design. Laura would have nothing to do but inflate herself. Speaking of inflation, in his Pandemonium oh, 2 review, sake. he even goes completely off on one about Nikki's chest size, and it's glorious. She's much more, well, endowed. I wonder if there's a limit to the size of those things. I guess there's no limit to the imagination. The knobs <laughs> in question are noticeably bigger. The game itself depicts your character too small to see anything major. What are you on? And could you give me some, please? Because I want whatever makes you give Cool Spot nearly a 10 out of 10. Play it loud in stereo, dude. Oh, boy. What do you 
you think he'll oh, say about God. the Virtual Boy? I bet he tears this thing a new one. Go on then. Red Alarm is the best Virtual Boy game there is. Red Alarm is a 3D flight game that mesmerizes all who play it. Oh, come on, man. Look at this. You can like it. Not the virtual boy. I actually, um, remember trying to play a game in the virtual boy. I didn't, I didn't own the virtual boy. It was like, I think it was like a family member or something. I don't know. But I, I tried playing a game in it and within a minute, minute and a half, I was... Oh, the nausea, that headache was like instantaneous, and it took a while to go away. Oh boy. If you want, but this is objectively terrible. It's a load of transparent lines. The depth of the 3D graphics is outstanding. You will perceive real distances. How could you possibly perceive any kind of depth with no textures? How are you seeing depth? Are you a being of corporeal form? Does George <laughs> think of Formula One on PS1? Well, he thinks that it shouldn't have been a simulation game. Yeah, we are has definitely come a long way since that. Why not have the a game virtual boy. where you have to find and drive to the hospital before your wife delivers her baby? Did you see that coming? What? Will you get sick of what? running into walls just because these kids can't walk right? Maybe, maybe not. You might get a kick out of it. Oh, so that's why he wants a game about driving his pregnant wife to the hospital. Because as soon as the baby's born, he can beat it. Why people what? actually spend 80 <laughs> bucks to beat a bunch of sprites into the ground when they can do it for free on a real live human being? Okay, great alert. Watch out, Wait everybody. a minute. George's wait a minute. George has lost it. Everyone's not oh, wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Time out. Time out. Uh oh. -uh. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, I know we all have urges to smack some bitches that disrespect you sometimes, but don't be. Don't be. Uh. Don't be smacking your significant others. Or or family members, friends, just, just, I know sometimes you want to start a fight for no reason, because you just want to fight, but how about you just play the fighting game, okay? You need to calm down, sir. You need to calm down. He doesn't even need to yeah, go I, off the rails the during the signals. review. He can start the, the review totally off his nut. Like with the Final Fantasy VIII review, when he starts the entire thing off by saying, I hope one of the lovers dies. Or in the Star Fox video, the... where he starts off saying, Andros will be by far the most awesome villain you'll ever encounter in any video game. He will remind you of Stephen King's The Lawnmower Man. Or in the Ocarina the of Time Lawnmower video, Man? that may be lumped in with the rest of the reviews and titled exactly the same way, but begins like this. Our review of Zelda won't air until mid-January. In many, many, many occasions george even begins videos as reviews for about 20 seconds or so and then just gives up and gives you a walkthrough or a cheat code to skip to the ending tiny tunes pinocchio mega man x jurassic park mickey mania king of monsters 2 joe and max secret of mana the mask super star wars bugs he was on Rabbit, some Rampage. all of these and more are structured exactly like this and out of the entire catalog of videos on offer i could only find one in this particular style i'm about to look at a versus video. Now, if I told you I was going to pit Super Mario 64 against any other video game of that time period, what in the world do you think it would be? Take a guess. Did you say Resident Evil? Because that's what they did. It seems as though the battle between the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation will be directly related to players' choices between Super Mario 64 and Resident Evil. Oh, yes because these games are just so similar that all of the people out there will only pick one or the other for their platforming fix. <laughs> well, let's go through this point by point. Oh God, I can't wait to see what you pull out of your hole here. Mario has camera motion during gameplay. He needs to close his hole. He needs to close it up. Cinema scenes. You can never move the camera in Resident Evil. Evil has real voices for its characters, but Mario and his friends are mute. What the hell are you talking about? Mario never shuts up in that game. Hello! Game over. Ravioli. <laughs> Did you play Mario 64, <laughs> or did you watch the beginning of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Mario doesn't require you to solve impossible puzzles to win the game, but Evil has you solve tons of them. Actually, you won't solve tons of them. The game is virtually impossible without the hint book. Can you do basic math? Can you add two and three together? Because if you can do that, 
You've solved the puzzles in Resident Evil. So what's the bottom line? <laughs> oh, is, is that it? Is that all we're comparing? <laughs> we're at the bottom line already? Okay, cool. See you next week, George. And by the way, apparently the platforming game Mario 64 is better than the survival horror game Resident Evil, in case you were wondering. But we are really sick of Nintendo 64 games having no dialogue. And real voices make Mario 64 more than worthy of your time. Nothing at all. It's disgraceful. And the contradictions. My Christ, the contradictions. Half the time, I don't even know if I should buy the game or not. At least it's harder than the piece of cake Mario 64. What? That little chore is extremely difficult. What? Stars are hidden everywhere. And I'm not just talking about contradictions what? between the writing and the gameplay, like in Newman Huss Racing. The disrespect. George complains that the game is way too easy because all the tracks are way too straight. 90% of the tracks are straight, resulting in a very low challenge level. Honestly, Only to you then go. drive dead straight into a bend and give I up see on the that. game. I'm talking about the contradictions in his own sentences that he writes during the same reviews. Everything about this game is top notch. The game is virtually impossible to beat, making it overwhelmingly frustrating for younger players. Okay, so is Einhander any good? This title could very well be the best shooter ever made. That sounds good if it's the best shooter ever made. Maybe I'll give it a try. Well, not as fun as Star Fox 64. Oh, never mind. The most exciting part of the Indiana Jones game is the cinema scenes. They're amazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> still images. <laughs> oh, okay, don't worry. Apparently still images are now terrible. While the dual stick control is ideal for situations uh, like the window, it I seems can't. unnecessary I can't, for actions like swinging a net to capture wayward monkeys. Swimming controls are way too fancy and cumbersome for their own good. Oh, thank God you told me that. I was about to spend 50 quid on the game this weekend. The control isn't bad, perhaps not even awkward. Oh. <laughs> but no matter how many contradictions <laughs> you come across, nothing will prepare you for the Marlinium Falcon. The Marlinium Falcon. Uh, wait. Or when gaming in wait the a minute. years. Wait a minute. I want to hear. I want to hear him say it again. Falcon. Oh fuck! I didn't. There we go. Nothing will prepare you for the Marlinium Falcon. The Marlinium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> or when gaming in the Clinton years believes in an opinion so strongly that they stick to it despite all of the backlash and then have to make another video addressing uh. the angry fans, such as what they did with Final Fantasy VII. The original review they did of the game is, to be honest, quite tame, especially considering how beloved that game was when it first came out. They basically say that the game from a design standpoint is exactly the same as the previous ones, that the story isn't massively engaging, and that the sound and music aren't very good. All fine opinions to have, even if you disagree with them, but the funniest things about these two videos together is that the original review was presented by a totally different person. Square certainly had to make some sacrifices to make Final Fantasy 7 a, a reality. And then George rides in on his shiny white steed <laughs> ready to defend those opinions in the second video, which says to me that he wrote the original review, knew that it would get hate, and so hid behind another presenter for the video review, and then got in a big fight with that other presenter after he took the backlash, forcing George to come on with an apology video. To be fair to the guy though, wow. he stands by all the original points they made and even expands on them a little more, so fair play to them for not backing down. And to see him say this with a totally straight face makes it worth watching all on its own. Final Fantasy is far from the near masterpiece that game critics and fans have been calling it. Yeah, suck it, nerds! Would be freaking what the la One of my personal listen. favorite comments he ever makes, though, is in the Star Fox listen. review. Listen. Wait. Okay. <laughs> this dude out here saying that with a straight face, and he's also in the same breath telling people that in order to make Laura Croft more interesting, she needs breast cancer. So he's also, like, against babies and um wants to be a wife beater i don't there's so many different signals so many different signals and they're not they're not pointing in a good direction is all i'm saying it, it's I, I can't he says the play control is so good that you'll actually notice how good it is <laughs> that you'll notice it. Password yep. will allow you to start the game with everyone saved except Morticia. Okay, seriously, what is the point in giving anybody a review if all you're gonna do is ignore the entire game except the very ending? With the code STCJDH, Bubsy can skip into stage 16 I miss and Chico, encounter the though. clean woolies. You can't call yourself a gardener if you jump over your neighbor's fence, steal their flowers, and then plant them in your own garden. <laughs> Even though Bubsy is easy, the game is oh, still Oh, the fucking neighbors. Excellent. Well, first of all, you like Bubsy. <laughs> and second of all, of oh god, like first of all, we got we got a s sort of glimpse into a 
lives of the neighbors of Caddy. Um, apparently he also steals their um, gardens. So there's that. Uh, but, ugh, fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. This guy is, like, giving me a migraine. Like, just thinking of, trying to think, like, of where he's he's at mentally. It's just, it's, no, I can't do it. I can't. Of course the game is easy, because you tried the first level, died over and over again, and then skipped to the final one. Is this person real? The Adams family no. has got a cool ending. If you use the password, you'll get there in no time flat. Dude, you've essentially spent $60 to look at a load of rinky-dink 16-bit fireworks that look like spit. Why are you so proud of yourself? <laughs> Maui Mallard is I, fun I, and easy. Like I was saying, I miss cheat codes. Levels, um, the game goes quickly. And to be fair, cheat codes... you skipped all of it! Yeah. A <laughs> to be fair some cheat codes uh they weren't always ways to make the game easier or to just literally skip levels or whatever sometimes it was like for things what one, one of my favorite ones for um golden eye uh was the big head mode that was one of my favorites like when you'd have like big head in uh, big heads in games that was one of the cheat codes. Um, God, what was the other one? It's like the, it's like the one that popped up into my head, of course, and I can't think of the other ones. But it's like sometimes they would uh, also make the game harder. There is also that. I just miss, I just miss cheat codes. Like they had full on books and magazines of just cheat codes for video games. We don't get that anymore. Everything's fucking online. Super NES, but easy to beat with a code. Oh, is it really? Is it easy to beat the game? With a code? You don't say? We're not sure, but we suspect there are 14 worlds with three levels each. Well, there you go. You see, if you keep skipping the entire game, you're stuck with just guessing how many levels the game has. You can't do that. That will send you straight to Dracula without playing any of the levels. Jesus Christ, I think I'm going mad. This same code will give you five lives. Oh, great. I've always wanted to know how to get five lives. Cute. But again, cheating spoils all the fun. So it, also, it was cheat, also cool. They had cheat codes where you had to figure out what they were. Like they'd just be hit. You don't they wouldn't need tell to you. Use the cheats. Is someone forcing you? Are you addicted? Do I need to call a helpline? The only way to win is <laughs> call to call all the helplines. And when it comes to this marathon video of quick Super Nintendo game reviews that he does, my god, the cheating comments are so plentiful, it's borderline a parody video. I actually don't know if this was a joke or not. You can cheat to see all the endings, a breeze to beat, but only if you cheat. You can win fairly easily by cheating. Beating the game is a piece of cake. This man hands. cheats Expect on his wife every day. Cheating. Really hard to beat with Guaranteed. It's hard to beat even with codes. You've got to cheat to win. And on occasion, this, if he doesn't this man decide cheats to skip the entire wife. game he's reviewing, he's got he'll just one, use demo footage mm -hmm. from the boot up screen because he can't play Spot Goes Hollywood or give such useful oh hints God, like to succeed in this battle, you must avoid the boss effectively and hit him many times. Gee, thanks. I didn't realize I was supposed to hit the boss and not get hit by the boss. Bad players will think the play control is What the fuck, buddy? Good players will think the play control Thank you so much good. for the gift. Gee, thanks. I didn't realize I had to learn the controls job. before I got good at the controls. The key to success is to reload Thank you anytime so much. you're not shooting. Gee, thanks. I didn't realize you had to reload your gun to get more and also bullets. Also, subscribe yourself. It. Press triangle to capture the cubes. Press triangle Thank to you capture so the much. cubes. I appreciate Press triangle it. to capture the cubes. Press triangle, Press triangle to capture the cubes. Whoa! The small team at gaming in the Clinton years even tried their hand at adding their own voices to some video games cutscenes to show us just how funny they were. Five seconds till self destruct. Thank you, Spidey. I appreciate Four. it. I really do. What a, what a start to the new year. Guys, why? I think we should take the time Thank you so much. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go. Quick. Good idea. Let's go. Now. Whoa. And speaking of being funny, yeah, we've Caddy's seen a lot just, of the jokes that these guys tried to execute throughout these near 300 <laughs> reviews. I'm starting to get the heebie-jeebies. And where I do indeed Not understand the that comedy is subjective, you know how we love lame humor. I personally found myself laughing at every single one of them. The bugs are bugging him. Which is ironic, because the bugs are bugging a bug. But not for the reasons they want. A trapdoor opens up, and I'm thrust into the depths of the basement of this old, disgusting, roach-infested building. Just kidding. Whatever happens, though, this what? is still public television we're working on, so we have to cut down on the profanities. That snow speeder kicks a major you-know-what. Okay, so before I go clinically you know insane, what? I think it's about time that we wrap up <laughs> gaming in the Clinton years.
That boy, what a trip that was. I won't lie. Shifting God, that through fucking the mud of over I just 1,300 can't. videos to pick out 287, but then watching 555 in total to make sure that the copies were actually copies. Thank you again, Spidey. Yeah, that was brain melting. But Thank I you hope again. You got a lot I really do it, appreciate you guys. I sure did. And again, do not harass anybody over this. This video is not a hate campaign because let's be honest, the more hate you send towards people like this, the less that we'll see of it in the future. Cringeworthy or not, let people express themselves because other Otherwise, you won't have anything to cringe at, will you? Namco Museum <laughs> Volume 5 does include a kinky, I mean, kind of cool gallery. Did George just let slip that he thinks the Pac-Man Museum is kinky? Well, well, Mommy, well. To be fair, Miss Pac-Man. As far as George Wood <laughs> himself no. goes, though, well, I don't know what he's up to. The dude has basically no internet footprint, and now he looks like Conan O'Brien on bath salts. Teeth. There's a few relatively recent interview videos floating around, and the Navigator channel tried doing this weird alternate reality game thing related to him, but I don't have a clue what any of it's about. Something to do with HD editions of full episodes of gaming in the Clinton years? I'm not sure. But then again, just like George Wood's fantastic reviews, I don't want to be sure. Demon's Crest, easy to beat, or is it? I want to be left in the dark. I want to be confused yeah, fucking because it's more boy. fun that way. And it makes this show seem all the more like a lost episode creepypasta that aired on TV, scared everyone, and then disappeared forever. Did George Wood even exist? Is he real? The lack of chasmic jumps. Chasmic may not be a real <laughs> word, but it should be. Your guess is as good as mine. And before I go, I'm going to uh, show to you now, in its entirety, the best review on this channel. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, hello? And remember, everybody, what? if you don't play this game, no. you're not a true gamer. <laughs> Subscribe and hit that bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I need validation. Special thanks to my executive producers on my Patreon page oh, in the puppy. description below. Matthew Hubble, Who's your Tardis puppy? Type 40, Exopass, Brandon Butler-Williams, Rami Moore 1485, Red-Eyed Critic, A.D. Thornton-Smith, Mitchell Reed, Fart Rules, Skullman, Basil, Daniel Who's and Alex, X Shadowhunter ZX, The Game Who's Chef, Slowpunk, Stephen LeBlanc, and Who's Calvin Costello. Stan, having no hair made me look hairier. He's like, fuck off, I'm napping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah the virtual boy is just it's no no vr has come a long way i know it still needs improvement but virtual boy god honestly <laughs> it's a wonder anyone continued making anything virtual <laughs> anything vr after the virtual boy yeah, that's a good vi that's another good video, another good cat kind of video. Ugh, sorry, I'm stretching. Ugh. Oh god. But yeah. I can see why a lot of people uh wanted me to react to this one. Like eventually I'm gonna catch up on the caddy videos. Eventually. But I don't mind taking like recommendations, so let me know for future streams and and videos and reactions and stuff <clears throat> like it uh send me some that i haven't watched yet so because right now i'm literally just going down the line of like which ones i haven't watched <laughs> yeah another good one another good one <laughs>